Hey guys, Mike with Financeable here. Today we're talking about the concept of operating leverage. In this video, we're gonna cover first what operating leverage is. We'll then go through a simple example where we can see operating leverage in action and then ultimately see how that, that example turns into the operating leverage formula or also called the degree of operating leverage formula. We'll then look at the impact of operating leverage on a business and then finally wrap it up with a case study of operating leverage in real life. So that's the agenda here, let's hop in. So let's kick this off with, what does the term operating leverage mean? Unfortunately, depending on who you talk to, you're gonna get different answers. First, there's the kind of more formal uh, definition of operating leverage, which is that operating leverage is a measure of the relationship between revenue growth and profit growth, or said differently, it's a look at how revenue growth turns into profit growth. But many times, particularly in the finance world, instead of that definition, you'll hear that operating leverage is the degree to which a company's cost structure is fixed. Now, as we'll see, these are both technically correct, um, but there's kind of the technical definition at the top, and then at the bottom, what most people verbally express about operating leverage. We wanna clarify that they're both there. With that said, in the slides ahead, we'll help you see how both of these definitions are technically true. Given that there are two definitions, let's kick it off with the relationship between fixed costs and operating leverage. So the short story here is a business with low fixed costs as a percentage of the total cost structure is a business with low operating leverage and a business with a high degree of fixed costs has high operating leverage. And that's why those two terms on the prior slide are sometimes commingled. So let's look at a very simple example of operating leverage in action. And we're gonna imagine that we have a business that has $4 of revenue, $2 of variable cost, a dollar of fixed cost, and thus a dollar of profit. So $4 of revenue, $3 of cost, a dollar of profit. So now let's imagine the company makes an additional sale for $2. It has a dollar of variable cost attached to that because we had $2 attached to $4 of revenue, so a dollar attached to $2 of revenue, but we have no incremental fixed cost because those costs by definition are fixed. As a result, this incremental $2 in revenue generates a full dollar in profit or said differently, our revenue increased by 50%, but our profit in this case increased by 100%. That's operating leverage in action. What we're seeing here is the increase in profit was far greater than the increase in revenue due to a degree of fixed cost in the cost structure. Now more formally, we can look at the relationship between those two, the 100% increase in profit and the 50% increase in revenue, and say that this business has two times operating leverage. On the next slide, we'll walk through how you get to that two times and the formula behind operating leverage, or again, also called the degree of operating leverage formula. So as I mentioned on the prior slide, all of this boils down to a formula, which is called either the degree of operating leverage formula or the operating leverage formula. Either way, it's the same idea. And what we're looking at in this formula is the profit growth percentage divided by the revenue growth percentage. So the change in profit relative to the change in revenue. And this gives us operating leverage, first of all. And what this is saying is, how fast does profit grow relative to each unit of growth in revenues? So beyond the formula, we wanna understand the impact that operating leverage has on the range of outcomes for a business, particularly when we're building a financial model or building any set of projections. So let's take a look at a simple example of a business with low operating leverage. And admittedly, this is a bit of a simplification, but it ultimately captures the point here. With a low operating leverage business, what we're gonna see most likely is a set of outcomes that are clustered toward the center, probably tilted toward the positive, but very few extreme outcomes. On the other hand, a business with high operating leverage is gonna have a group of outcomes clustered in the very bad area and a group of outcomes clustered in the very good area. And this is because we get much more dramatic impacts to profit from a given change in revenue with high operating leverage. And so we're gonna have some very good outcomes and some very bad outcomes, but a lot less in the middle. And this is not to say that operating leverage is bad or even that it's good. It's just that when you're building a model, you want to understand the impact of the range of outcomes that operating leverage has on your model. So now let's look at a real life case study of operating leverage in action with Fortive, which is an industrial conglomerate spun out of Danaher a few years ago. With this company, we're gonna look at their numbers as of Q2 2020, so right after the pandemic hit, this company was hit uh, and their revenue declined. And more specifically, just to look at the data here, we're gonna look at their revenue data by segment. We're also gonna look at operating profit by segment, but note that within their segments, they have this other segment that is really, in this case, basically just fixed costs. So what we're gonna see is when we get to the 
total operating profit a much higher degree of operating leverage than even what you would see within the individual units because that fixed cost is carrying forward within the other segment. So let's take a look at how we calculate operating leverage for both the segments and overall for it. So let's start off looking at the professional instrumentation division. So within that division, revenue declined very slightly and profit grew very slightly actually. So we're gonna say this is not meaningful from an operating leverage perspective. It's a very small movements, not a whole lot to say here. On the other hand, with industrial technologies, revenue declined by 13% but profit declined by 67%, so a massive multiple of the revenue decline. And in this case, we would divide the profit growth by the revenue growth to get to five times operating leverage. So now let's look at total forwardive. And remember that total forwardive has that other segment where there's 50 million of cost that was effectively fixed from one period to the next. So with total forwardive, we have a revenue decline of just 5% now, but a profit decline of 33%, to get to operating leverage, we would divide the 33% by the 5%, and we get to approximately seven times operating leverage, so an even higher level of operating leverage for the total business than the industrial technologies divisions. So this is an example of operating leverage in real life. You can see that just a small decline in revenue resulted in a material decline in profit. So hopefully this concept makes a little bit more sense now. If you found this video helpful, definitely hit the like button down below and subscribe. We've got a lot more videos coming. Take care and hope to see you soon.